Okay, I think we should be live. I think we are live. We're live, yay! Hello everybody. <gasps> Welcome to Pommel and Need's first ever live stream. So this is very exciting and also please excuse us if anything goes a bit peep tong in terms of technology because we're we're kind of new to all of this but thank you so much if you're joining us and basically what we're going to do in the next hour is we're going to have a very special guest who we're going to talk to about various topics yeah, to do with self-care which is what this episode is about it's all about self-care then we're going to do a little demonstration massage demonstration and in this episode we're going to focus on the lower back which a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're sitting at a desk. And um, so we'll do a little massage, self-massage demo and a few stretches. And I know Kate, uh, our guest, who I'll tell you a little bit about in a minute, has been struggling with her lower back, so we're going to do that. And then at the end, um, you will have a chance to ask any questions uh, to either our special guest or us at Pummel and Lee, myself and Claire. So you'll see there's a little comments uh, feed and you can ask any question as it comes to you throughout the stream and we'll do our very best to answer that at the end. So I think you heard me say our very special guest today is Kate Bishop and she is a life and well-being coach and we feel really lucky actually to have her because she is certified with the prestigious coaching academy which is basically one of the most renowned sort of academies for that field and she has a vast amount of knowledge to do with coaching she not only um, coaches individuals uh, about confidence and work and and careers and things like that but she also um, runs various workshops and she's worked with multiple organizations I think the most recent one she actually worked with was the Princess Trust and she did a, a series of workshops for the Princess Trust and it was all about make your impact so basically um, confidence in the workplace but as well as confidence in the workplace and career focus she's got a huge kind of focus on well-being and mental health. So that's really uh, feeds into self-care and, and everything we're gonna be talking about today, uh, which is so relevant at the moment. And lastly, I'll just I'll stop blabbering on in a minute, uh, but lastly, you might see the little PayPal pummel and need uh, floating below your screen. Now, this is just if you have any uh, inclination to give a little donation, don't worry at all if you can't, there's absolutely no obligation. It's uh, going to be split three ways. So it's going to be split between ourselves at Pamela Need, Kate Bishop Coaching, and also a nominated charity. And the nominated charity Kate actually chose for this week, and it is a charity called Calm. Now, I'd never heard of Calm before, but it's actually a men's health charity, and it's uh, Men's Health Week this week, so it's very fitting. And this charity is really important because they really try and help men between the age of, age of roughly 18 to 45 who are struggling with mental health issues. And uh, unfortunately, the biggest killer for men between aged ages 18 to 45 is suicide, which I, I didn't realize, and that's just horrific. So CALM are, are really, you know really good and really trying to help this awful situation with the, the biggest killer of men and it's a third of anything you donate today uh, will go to calm as well so anyway i'm gonna shut up now and uh, <laughs> say hello to claire claire hello how are you? i'm good how, how are you, are you? great how's your morning been Yes, good. Yeah, intermittent showers and sunshine. Um, so <laughs> great for the garden. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it looks like it might uh, piddle it down in a bit. Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite interesting if you're out and about. Um, for people that don't know us, can you just explain uh, roughly sort of what Pummel and me do, who we are? Why do you yeah. care about self-care? 
Absolutely. Um, so myself and Lucinda set up Pummel and Need about four years ago. And what we do is we come into the workplace and offer um, massage. So either an express seated massage or a longer full body treatment to people who are hunched over their desk all day, um, working very hard and can't seem to find the time to fit in any sort of self-care outside of work. Um, and it's been really, uh, really rewarding. Um, the feedback is always fantastic. You know, who doesn't love a massage? Um, and while people really enjoy the massages, it also does prompt them to think about things like posture, self-care, taking breaks during the day, and maybe going to seek out a bit of um, help with things that might be um, niggling background pain for years um, that you learn to ignore and it just becomes normal. And suddenly you go, oh, actually, why is my right shoulder up around my ear? Or why am I hunched over my desk so much? Um, so yeah, that's that's what we were doing up until the lockdown in uh, February. Um, now, of course, that's not really possible. So we've been doing online videos to help people with some self-massage and stretching techniques that you can do, whether you're at home or whether you are someone who is still working. But of course, you can't have the contact that you would normally have with a massage therapist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so yeah, both Claire and I, haven't been able to work in our, our usual sense. We've been doing these uh, sort of help, uh, working from home videos to try and help people with a bit of their own self-care. But I think that's, it's a really interesting point that even when we're thinking about it, we're thinking we're not working, but the people that normally get treatments as well aren't getting that physical self-care that they normally get. So how does that impact people and and if you're used to getting physical therapies and and if you're struggling with that sort of physical contact as, as a form of self-care that's um that's been something we've sort of thought about a lot and hopefully um our demonstrations can give people a little bit of a sense of that um being able to have that physical therapy so um so yeah so we'll be talking about self-care but how it impacts us as individuals and and sort of the mental aspect of it but without further ado i think we should introduce kate our very special guest right so bear with me as my technology skills <laughs> right, add kate. hello hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, kate. how are you I'm very well. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your first live stream. It's it's really oh. exciting. And actually, as Claire was talking, I've just done some shoulder rolls and adjusted my position Ooh, and my posture. Feeling a little bit, uh, a bit looser after your shoulder yeah, rolls. Yeah, definitely. I can't <laughs> wait. Oh. So, Kate, I, am, I, I must admit, I'm a bit of a sort of... Uh, I suppose novice, ignorant, don't really know much about coaching. So what sort of inspired you to get into coaching? How did you first find out about it? What tell us your sort of your backstory about how you got into um, it? Um yeah, it's it's a quite an interesting one. I think um well, a bit of my background is that I trained to be a performer years and years ago. And whilst I was performing, I also sort of fell into the events world a bit by accident and started to work with a, quite a small company and really helped build that up, that small business to a, a thriving, I mean, fantastic company. Um, but, you know, as many of us find, I probably was there a few years too long. Um, and whilst I was there, I, I went through a sort of a bit of a personal crisis, as it were, and, and kind of hit close to rock bottom within myself and um during that time I didn't really see any way out I'd sort of you know trained to be an actor done lots of acting but hadn't really got a I think what quite a few people say a proper degree behind me and didn't really think I had anything to to offer an employer and then um a colleague of mine said oh you should try this this coaching course just go on it for and and, and see and I halfway through the the first day I thought oh actually I really like this and this is the one part of my job I, I really love doing and I was coaching and mentoring quite a lot of the team within that business and um that evening I met up with a, a great friend of mine and over several gins we decided that I would become a coach and <laughs> one very odd business plan later um I studied whilst I worked um 
and then set up my business. And that was about, you know, three, four years ago um, that I've been coaching um, continually. So it was sort of a, a bit of a, I love this. How do I do it all the time? Yeah, and that's very admirable to to be working and studying at the same time. I mean, that must have been yeah. pretty full on, but it, it, it's a reflection of how passionate, I suppose, you are for coaching because you you obviously discovered something that you really love. And and I think the thing that comes across when when looking at sort of what you do is you seem to, even though your career is career focused and it's it's about helping people with confidence, a lot of it is about helping people with their their well being and their mental health. So mm. was that was that something that was very important for you to kind of uh, involve that in your coaching and and I suppose what I'm asking is how is it different to say counselling coaching but you having that well being and and mental right. aspect to it? Yeah, I think I'll take the the counselling and, and coaching differences first, and then maybe come back to that the, the point about why I'm doing well-being mm -hmm. um I think people do get a bit confused and, and and sometimes there's a bit of a crossover between coaching and counseling and, and I see them as quite separate things and with with counseling it's much more about sort of well, where are you now and looking at your past to to a certain extent and how that's affected you and 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 maybe readjusting your mindset your habits you know the wonders of cognitive behavioral therapy that side of things to move forward in a more positive way. Whereas the coaching that I do is much more, where are you now? Where do you want to be in sort of the slightly longer term future? And how do we get an action plan to get you there, as it were? And as long as that is aligned with your values and what your what's true to you, um, then it's going to work if it's not aligned with your values. So if you want a career, then you don't really believe in in the industry, for example, or the company that you work for, or you don't believe in the management, then chances are you're, you're not going to want to remain there for, for much longer. Mm. Um, so I think it's, you know, coaching is much more future focused and action oriented, whereas counselling may be, you know, a bit more emotional. I'm not saying that coaching doesn't go to the emotional side of things, because I think that's when you really deep dive, that's when the magic comes out and you get these wonderful self realizations. And we realize that we're almost blocking ourselves just as much as everything else going on. Um, and then when you asked about me and well being, well, I think when I had that experience of, of being really depressed and really down for, for quite a long time, I also realized that quite a few friends of mine were experiencing that and I thought well I don't mm. want anyone to go through what I've gone through what they've gone through so I'd really do make sure when I'm working with individual clients one-on-one -on -one, whether it's career progression career change or confidence coaching you know what do you really want um, not what society is saying not what you should be doing but what do you want to do and then when it comes to going into organizations and businesses really focusing on on well-being in the workplace and which is why I love you know what you do it's looking at the physical well-being and um, my sort of take is maybe a bit more of the emotional well-being yeah. side of things yeah no that is but I mean so that perhaps is your sort of your personal um so do you think that the well-being is is more your personal sort of style that you put into it because it's so important to you i don't know what it is usp or whatever they call it but um you know what i mean is 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 that is that normal that to find in sort of life coaching or would you say that the well-being and the mental health aspect is something that's because it's so important to you you've brought that into your coaching as a, as a sort of extra as something that is is really special to you and your your coaching technique um i mean i i can't speak for every other coach and i think all coaches have a, a specific focus whether it's relationship financial or a bit like me career and, and well-being but it was very important for me to to work with people who not only want to create a great career or um, really build up their confidence, but to be well whilst they're doing it. And I, my sort of strap line for my business is to make Mondays feel just as great as Fridays. We all feel great on Fridays because we, well, we used to be able to go to the pub and have a drink or um, be able to go out and have a bit of fun time, or at least the weekend was there. Um, and I was just coming across and working with a lot of individuals and going into businesses. People on Mondays were just I can't believe I have to do this. I'm going through this again and again. And so I think that there's definitely a huge amount of regaining that happiness, contentment, fulfillment, 
whatever you want to label it as within your work. And that might mean you have to change completely or that might mean um, you have to change parts of yourself or, or make a few tweaks along the way. Yeah. And, and, and actually, that's interesting about you saying, you know, that might mean you have to change completely. I imagine I, I certainly during lockdown have um, sort of questioned what I'm doing, questioned my career, questioned my personal life, questioned everything, to be honest, because there's just been so much time to think about things which which I found um quite a challenge I have to admit mm -hmm. so have mm -hmm. you found that that this lockdown or whatever the the situation that we're in at the moment has impacted your coaching has it has it brought up a lot more people who are suddenly sort of not sure where to go and and been contacting you Yes. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's affected, I think it's affected my business and it's affected me quite, you know, no surprises there, right? Um, in terms of the business side of things, I mean, all of the, the talks and the workshops I was going in to run in-house with companies, that just fell off a cliff, you know, and, and I do things virtually, but it's not the same, you know, you... I'm quite sort of hands on with workshops. And so like you found with Pamela Need, you just can't do that at the moment. But when it comes to one on one coaching, that's that's been really interesting. I think a lot of people have had all this time on their hands or at least more time and more thinking space to mm. to really consider what they want. And for a lot of people I know who are, who are on furlough and, and for a lot of people who have unfortunately been made redundant or potentially fear they're facing that, they're really thinking, well, hang on a minute, this is a great opportunity to, to sit down, take stock and consider what do I want, not just in the six months or in the next year when hopefully we will be over this and through this, um, but what's the longer term? What's the sort of, not necessarily five or 10 year plan, but what do I really want later on down the track? And and actually, I'm not really enjoying what I'm doing now. or What I'm doing now is not going to get me there. So that's been really interesting. There's been a lot more, um, I think, inquiries, clients talking about that now than there was this time last year, six months ago, definitely. Yeah, more awareness of um yeah of yeah. actually being able to make positive changes i think uh, I, I certainly feel that sometimes we are we, we sort of pick a path in life and we're sort of expected to go down that route and you invest so much time in that route that then there's then there, there's a fear maybe to actually admit that it's not the right route for you but it's never too late to change I mean that's the thing you can whatever age whoever you are you I always I think it's just been about being a little bit brave and just maybe mm. sort of accepting that change embracing that change and so as me the little me if I decided I wanted to um go into coaching uh, have some coaching um which sounds pretty cool um how would I how would I go about it how would I sort of start my journey into kind of getting some coaching well I there? think and um, yeah everything you said absolutely yes um we, we often are steered down a certain path that we don't quite fit or isn't quite right for us so if, if you're feeling that or or as you say you just need some coaching for, for any area of your life I think the first and foremost thing is to really um remember that coaching is right for everyone at the right time and with the right coach. So if you're feeling ready and think this is the time for coaching, great, you want to go and find the right coach. Um, and there's there's lots of you know coaching directories there and you might want to really consider, at the moment it's all being done online or um, via phone, but if you're considering investing in this in the long term, you might want to consider if you want to actually meet with your coach when we're through lockdown. And, and so that might, maybe you want to consider more of a local coach. I mean, I work with people all over the world because of the wonders of technology, but I also do meet people face to face when we're allowed, hopefully very soon. And I think what's really key is is knowing, um, getting to know your coach. So um, asking them, you know, are they qualified, who they qualified with? And I'm not suggesting you go and be an expert on all the qualifications, but that's really, really important because, I mean, I went through four years of coaching, I'm personal development coaching and small business coaching um, and then did lots of continual professional days as well in terms of mm. resilience etc cetera, etc cetera. so it is important that whoever you choose to, to work with 
is qualified and has had that sound training and that could be with somewhere like the coaching academy who who i trained with and i think um my sort of top tip is if you're looking for a coach have a google um but also ask friends family people you know and say have you ever used a coach would you recommend anyone because whoever they've worked with and if you like your friend and, and love your family chances are you're going to probably get on quite well with that coach um so ask for referrals and and speak to several coaches before you make a decision so have and, and you know all coaches should i hope give you a bit of time whether it's 15 minutes half an hour i mean for example i spent an hour with all my potential clients for them to to say yes coaching is right for me yes kate you're the right coach and for me to go yes i think i can really help you yeah it, so, it sounds like it needs to be a partnership so you kind of need yes. to know that it's the, it's the right partnership that's going to work well together which is which Definitely. is you know amazing and in terms of i suppose if we look at self-care in a sort of general sense, um, how have you been finding lockdown? Has, has there been any kind of struggles or anything that for a self-care that you have found really helpful? I mean, how you personally as Kate, how have you, how have you been finding it? Yeah, it's, do you know what, for a, up until about two weeks ago, I thought I was doing really well, to be honest. I was like, I'm loving this. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of public transport, I have to admit. And I'm like, oh, fantastic. I can have speak to loads of people and I'm getting to speak to loads of potential clients. This is wonderful. And I actually wrote a, a blog post about this fairly recently that suddenly I almost hit the, the lockdown wall, as it mm. were. And I just, um, the best way I could describe it is I just felt really heavy and drained, but I couldn't find the cause or the reason I was doing all the things that I normally do um, but I had let a few things slip so I really took stock and um, I quite like to have a bit of a structured routine especially in the morning I'm quite I'm a very annoying morning person. I have to be, I have to get up and just yeah. you know, exit the building and go and work off some energy and just deal with myself before I interact with people because they just come across a bit too much. <laughs> but even that I was, which I really relish that time in the morning. I really relish um, doing some yoga, doing some stretches. This is my, maybe why I've got some lower back problems because I haven't been doing some stretches and, <laughs> and just taking some time. I've been trying to meditate a bit more and, and, um, and and do exercise and I realized that I'd let that that slip quite a bit so that self-care that had been quite ingrained in my daily routine had had gone mm -hmm. and I, I was really feeling the effects of that quite emotionally so with the thought, routine so you feel like for you it's it, it helps to have a sort of set routine and and yeah and, a, and I suppose a, a yeah for the day you kind of know and, Absolutely. And then I think the other part of it is, is this lack of contact with people. And this is fantastic. I mean, having video calls and uh, eventually managed to get my parents to A, buy an iPad and B, managed to get them to FaceTime, which took us about three hours. And it was just <laughs> this incredible feat we got over and to see them it was really emotional. I had to come off it and have a bit of a, I had, had a bit of a cry, I had a bit of a moment. But this, this inability to, um, and this is going to sound a little bit weird, but touch people. And something that I think everyone's suffering from now is something called skin hunger, which again, sounds a bit weird and a little bit kinky. Um, but we, you know, we have tribes in our life, groups of people, um, our friends, our family, our work colleagues, our, our socialising. And you may be living with your family or your partner or housemate or pet, but for a lot of people, that's that's not enough. And, and we're really missing, you know, those hugs with friends or the even the corporate handshake, you know, um, yeah. humans, we're, we're tribal and, and we we bond through through touch and we're losing that. And and I, that was when I thought, ah, oh, OK, that might be something I'm really struggling yeah, with at the moment. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I I find that I've got a bit of anxiety, obviously, about not seeing people, but I've also got anxiety about when we do see people, because then I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. how how close can I get to you and 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 I sort of feel yeah this sense of yeah oh I don't I want to see people but I don't at the same time because <laughs> I, I'm a bit scared about it so it's this real yeah. kind of tug of war feeling of sort of I'm not sure if I, and, if I do want the lockdown to sort of ease because 
I'm still a bit scared about seeing people, but at the same time, I desperately miss people. So it's a it's a real conflict, sort of. Uh, it's a uh, real emotion. tough one. Um, and yeah, my birthday is this week and I was thinking, oh, should I go back home to where my parents are? But that means taking, you know, a train, a tube and yet another train. And, you know, they are touching wood, fit, you know, healthy, hale and hearty but they are in the what is classified the danger zone. And I just, it's it's really, really tough. I, I share that anxiety with you because we don't yeah. really know what to do and what the upshot is of our actions. And I think a lot of people, I think probably the majority of people are, are feeling that or experiencing that at the moment. And I don't have any answers for that. And I, yeah. I wish there were some. So if anyone knows, please leave in the comments. Yeah, well, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good to talk because obviously it's, it's um, it's things that we're all going through and I think as well for me I've struggled with the fact that some people seem to be loving lockdown other people obviously not so much but you know it's I think it's just good to say exactly how you're feeling whether it is that you're loving mm -hmm. lockdown because I think it, it yeah it's just good to just keep that kind of flow of conversation going because that's oh. all we can do at the moment it's it, it and until things start to properly ease we've got to just kind of embrace what we can do to help each other mm. and I think this kind of talking and being aware that some people may be struggling more than others is is really useful and talking yeah, about struggles um can I just ask you to just tell us a little bit about the charity that you um nominated because I've never yes. actually heard of this charity until you um, oh. Absolutely. I think. And, um, oh, yeah. Thank you. for and, and thank you so much for allowing me to, to nominate Calm. So Calm is um, short for the Campaign Against Living Miserably. And it is Men's Health um, Health Awareness Week this week. And I chose a, a men's mental health charity because, um, well, for several reasons. And um, there's quite a lot of men who are very close to me in my life and a lot of men who I work with in coaching and, and specifically on the well-being side who who really struggle to to open up about their mental health whether that's good poor or, or whatever and and calm really focuses on poor mental health and I think that's really important to make that distinction we all have mental health just like we have physical health and dental health and sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great and um I'm coming across the more I go into the well-being the wonderful world of well-being that um men are not being served particularly well when it comes to their their mental health um and I think there's a few reasons for that they might feel a bit ashamed that they can't open up about it they might not know how to do that or who to go to they might feel that they're judged um and some of the therapies that we have are fantastic, but maybe they're not necessarily engineered towards men's needs. Um, men are much less likely to, um, you know, go out and, and try and get talking therapy, for example, that, you know, they and, and they're, again, myriad of reasons. And I'm not a man, so I'm not talking from a, um, a male point of view here. This is just my observations and, and what I found out. And um, I think that at the moment we are we are facing a bit of a, a mental health crisis and that's only going to increase the more with lockdown and I, I think you know to your point yes it's absolutely fine to to be okay with lockdown and, and to quite enjoy it um I was but you know it, it mm. I think we're really going to find a bit of a, a spike in poor mental health and I think that will affect men um and calm is just fantastic they're, they're there to to help support and but they're focused on on mental health for men so if if you are a guy and you're watching this or if you know of someone who who is struggling then then please do reach out to them because um well they're just fantastic and if if you want to as you said at the beginning give a few pennies give a few pounds then they'll be really really beneficial yeah no it's such an important charity especially as you said at the moment because uh, i think mm -hmm. mental health is really is really uh paramount at the moment we're all struggling maybe a wee bit more than we would normally be so thank you kate and thank you so much for all the all the discussion and, and information on coaching if if anyone has a question for kate about coaching then pop it in the comments box because we will um become a we're, we're about to move on to the demonstration the little massage demonstration but kate will join us again at the end uh to to talk through anything any questions that you may have 
So thank you so much, Kate. It's been really insightful. Thank you. And I'm just going to now, because I am so good at this, uh, Claire back. It's an and, option, I swear. <laughs> and um, I will pop you pop you in the background to, to okay. do the demo along Thank with you us. so okay, much. That's all right. Lovely. Great. So, and I will that was fantastic. Also. Thank you, Kate, for um, that was really Thank insightful. You. And um, if anyone wants to donate, obviously do. But if you can't, um, please do retweet and share and amplify um, the, the causes because that means a lot to people as well when they when they can be a bit more vocal on social media and when they feel like people are actually taking, um, taking note of what they're saying. So um, we're going to move on to... Um, Kate's chosen area for the self-massage, which is the lower back. And I know this is something that affects a lot of people, um, whether you're sitting down a lot or whether um, it's, you know, uh, something like a chronic pain or an old injury that you might have. So um, we're going to demonstrate that um, they're really easy to do. You don't need anything. You don't need any equipment. You don't need any oil. Um, these are quite simple massage and stretching techniques that hopefully will help to ease a bit of the tension in the lower back. So the first one we're going to look at is the seated hip flexor stretch, which is a really nice way to extend through the lower back by easing out tension in the hips. Um, so often when you are sitting for a long time, your hips are quite crunched up, the hip flexors become shortened and tight and that has a triggering effect on the lower back. So as you can see, Lucinda is sitting at the front of the chair with your feet flat on the ground and then you can use your arms down by your side and grip onto the side of the chair. Um, while you're going through these massage techniques, remember to breathe. It's really important to keep your breathing nice and deep and relaxed. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is take one of your legs and drop that leg behind you under the chair with the toe towards the ground. And as you're doing that, you are moving towards the edge of the chair, towards the front, coming up off and using your arms to support you. And you should already feel a nice stretch into the um, groin and the hip flexor area. So this is essentially um, a lunge, but without any impact on the knee. And you can push this as far as feels comfortable for you and hold it for about 20 to 30 seconds. And when you've done that, come back into the seated position and you repeat on the opposite side. So take the leg right behind you, place the toes on the ground and then use your hands to support you as you come up off the chair. And you should feel a nice deep stretch down through the hip flexors. And again, as with everything, just listen to your own body. If it feels uncomfortable or painful, ease off. So what you want to do is push towards the threshold. So you're working through tightness, but not towards a place of pain. Um, and this is something that you can do two or three times as much as feels right for you. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the outer hip and the glute stretch. So we're going to work at lengthening through the outer hips and into the three major muscles in the glutes. So you start by swiveling away from your desk or your table if you're, um, if you're at a desk or table. So you want to have a nice bit of room in front of you. Then as Lucinda is showing, you're sitting upright in the chair, keeping your head and your neck aligned. Then cross one ankle over the opposite knee and flex the foot. So you're activating the muscles through the lower leg. And this is really important as it helps to protect the knee joint. Now you might already feel a bit of a stretch down through the hip and into the glutes. If you're not feeling anything at this point, you can start to hinge forward at the waist and you can lean right into the, that hip. And again, hold this for about 20 to 30 seconds. Now, with this, you can lean as far forward as you like. You can come back, you can repeat it a couple of times and it's a really nice way to loosen out the glutes. So we're going to stay on this side for now. Um, we're going to look at a seated QL stretch. So the QL is the quadratus lumbrorum. Um, so what you want to do is keep that ankle crossed over the opposite knee 
And then with the other arm, reach right up into the air and then stretch over towards the toes. And what this does, is it helps to lengthen through the side of the body, down into the glutes and the hip as well. But it helps to ease out any tension you might be feeling in the lumbar spine. So you should feel a nice um, deep stretch here. And if, if you're not feeling anything, try to push a little bit further and you can use your breath to help with this. So taking a really nice inhalation and then on the exhalation, just see if you can push a little bit further. Okay, so we're going to come back to the um, outer hip and glute stretch on the other side. So as you can see, Lucinda is just repositioning for um, visual guidance. So um, take the other leg, bring the ankle up and across the knee. And again, try to flex the foot so you're protecting the knee joint. And it's totally normal for one side of the body to feel different to the other because we're not symmetrical. So you might be feeling a little bit more or less of a stretch on one side. So with the foot flexed, um, you want to lean forward, hinge from the waist. And again, try to take a nice deep breath in and on the exhalation, see if you can push forward just a little bit more. And hold it for about 20 to 30 seconds or longer if you can, because giving that amount of time allows the muscles to get used to being a little bit longer. They're used to being contracted and tense. You want to give them a chance to adapt to being slightly longer. And then slowly and gently come up, just um, observing the integrity of your spine. So we don't want any jerking or sudden movements. And we'll work on the same leg to go into the QL stretch, the quadratus lumbarum. So with the same leg crossed over the opposite knee, reach up into the air, nice and high, feel a stretch through the side of the body and then reach across in a diagonal towards the toes. And take a nice deep breath in and on your exhalation, see if you can push just a little bit further so you get a nice stretch down into the lower back. Okay, lovely. And then again, slowly come up and you can relax the legs and give yourself a little bit of a shake or a wobble or <laughs> a, few, a few breaths or a creative interpretive dance as Lucinda's showing us. <laughs> um, so we're going to come into a seated twist now which is really nice to work all the way through the spine. So you're sort of corkscrewing along the spine. You're working from the lumbar up into the thoracic. So again, perch close to the edge of the chair, nice straight back with your head over your neck and think about actively engaging your abs. So you're, you're trying to engage the, the lower belly. Um, I know a lot of us have maybe had a little bit too much to eat or drink during lockdown, not been as active as normal. So engage what abs are there. <laughs> and this is really important to help um, activate or to help uh, protect your lower back. So bring your arms up towards your chest and cross them over. Take a nice deep breath in and on the exhalation, twist over to one side. And again, you can hold this for 20 to 30 seconds. Keep breathing. And you might find that with your, with your exhalations, you can twist a little bit further. Try not to strain the neck. Try to keep the movement um, located in the back rather than just using your neck. And if you wanted to add a little bit of extra resistance, you can use one arm. So you can hold on to the bottom of the chair and then use the other arm at the back of the chair and just gripping on and giving yourself a bit of extra resistance as you twist. Um, try not to hunch up your shoulders when you're doing this. It's really easy to sort of want to do this as you're twisting, but you want to keep everything as relaxed as possible. And then slowly come back to the center and we'll do the same on the other side. So bring your arms up to the chest and take a nice deep breath in. And on the exhalation, twist around to the other side. Lovely. And then again, um, if you want to add a bit of extra resistance, you can use the arms 
to swivel yourself around a little bit more. Fantastic. And slowly come back to the center and take a nice deep breath. And we will just move into a very brief um, self-massage section. So I appreciate that um, self-massage isn't the same as someone else doing it for you, but um, with, uh, with what's going on, we work with what we've got. So we're going to start with um, just doing a little bit of effleurage, basically, which is where you get the muscles nice and warmed up. So use the flats of your hands, either side of the spine, to rub from the mid back right down to the sacrum, through the sides of the back and into the glutes. And this is a good way to get some uh, get some blood circulating around the area. If you've been sat for a long time, if the muscles are stagnant, um, they can become um, they become quite tight, and you want to get things loosened up before you work into any sort of deeper massage techniques. So you can be fairly vigorous with this. Again, listen to your own body. Um, of course, avoid the bony processes of the spine. You want to just be working into the soft tissue around the spine. And get things moving. Okay, so now starting with one side of the back, you place your hand in a fist position. So you use your um, forefinger and knuckle and you work up and down the muscles along the side of the spine using a slow but firm gliding motion. And as you can see, Lucinda is leaning forward slightly. So this is good to just slightly intensify the, um, the pressure and work a little bit more deeply. And as always, avoid the actual spine. Just work into those muscles that run along the side of the spine, which can become really tight. These are the erector spinae, which are basically supporting us all the time. Anytime we're sitting up or standing, those muscles are activated. So they can become really tight. Okay, lovely. Um, and then we'll do the same on the other side. So take the take the hand into a fist uh, position and then using the knuckle, you just work along the side of the spine. And if it's uncomfortable at any point to work with the knuckles and the fist, you can resort to using the thumbs, but we always try to be careful with the thumbs. You've got a very delicate joint, the, um, the joint at the bottom of the thumb here and overusing it can, can cause damage. So if you can use the strength of your hand and the knuckles, it's advisable. Okay, so uh, now we are going to Take the hands in a fist position again and use all four knuckles to work in a circular motion into the fleshy area around the glutes, which again can become really tight. Um, if you find any areas that are particularly tense, you might feel what is a little, what we call a knot, which is a bit of redundant or fibrous muscle tissue. You can just hold on that for a few, a few seconds longer and press into it. And that can help to release um, some of the tension that you might be feeling in particular areas. And I know I've got plenty of knots in my, in my shoulders and my lower back. So it's nice to, it's a sort of um, pleasurable pain, we call it. Okay, and moving on to the other side, we'll do the same thing on the other side. So take your hand in a fist and use all four knuckles and you work all the way down into the glute and try and get things, get things nice and loose. I know a lot of people are at home doing their home workouts and doing their 100 squat challenge and that kind of thing. So you might be feeling it a little bit if you've been doing something like that. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is um, the little, what we call a caterpillar. So um, what you want to do is locate the lower ribs. So it's actually a lot lower than we think. Your lower ribs, there's not much space between your hip joint and your lower ribs. So you want to work below those areas. And you take your knuckle and you want to create a stepping or a caterpillar-like movement working through that area. And again, avoid the hip bones, avoid the actual ribs and avoid the spine. You're just working into that section of the lower back. Lovely. And then we'll take it to the other side. So again, you use that um, knuckle and like a little caterpillar, you just work through any areas of tension. 
like a um, little worm going through the soil. <laughs> so it should feel firm, but again, not painful. And try to keep breathing nice and deeply. It's very important to make sure that we're getting plenty of deep breaths into these massages. And we always, when we do massage, we encourage people to remember to breathe deeply, partly to keep you relaxed, but also partly because you want to encourage as much oxygen into the body as possible. You want to have really healthy oxygenated blood flowing through the muscles. Okay, so the final um, little massage technique we're working on is... Um, taking your thumbs or your first two fingers and you want to use small circular motions and work right down through the lumbar vertebrae into the sacrum. So you're just working down through the spine as Lucinda is showing. Um, if you're doing this at home and if you have something like a tennis ball, um, we've, we've demonstrated this in one of our working from home videos, it's episode seven, um, but you can take a tennis ball and you can either lean against a wall or you can lie on the floor depending on how much pressure you'd like and what's comfortable for you. Um, and this is a good way to you know, be able to relax the arms and the shoulders and get that same sensation of the ball working through any tense muscles along the side of the lumbar vertebrae. Okay, so I think Lucinda and Kate and hopefully yourselves at home should be nice and loose now. Um, if you have any questions about any of the demonstrations, please feel free to um, either send us a message or leave a comment or an email. Um, and like I said, we've we've got a working from home series. We've got 12 videos which go through massage techniques that focus on different areas of the body um, and are really easy to do and can all be done without any equipment or oil. So please feel free to have a look at those as well. Yeah. All right, Lisa, so how are you feeling? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot more relaxed. Oh, good. Okay, how, how are, are you? you feeling, <laughs> it was a very good job. I was muted because I didn't realise quite how tight I was in certain areas, and there was some very strange noises and <laughs> awful words coming out my mouth. That's amazing. Totally normal. But, wow. <laughs> were there any areas that you um, struggled with to understand what we were trying to say to do? Or um, I think like? not struggled with just the just a bit of clarification on the very first one when we're doing that that lunge the seated lunge and that was incredible because I I've also got quite dodgy knees as well I'm just a bit broken I think <laughs> um but that felt amazing but I thought when you're um lunging the 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 foot and leg that's going back underneath the chair does yeah do, should our knee be touching the floor no so you no. want to keep right. it up okay. off the floor um if you so if you did want to increase it um it's basically it's a really handy one for people who do have knee issues because they don't like to put pressure on the knee if you mm -hmm. wanted to you could put a couple of cushions or something so that if you wanted to drop down further um you'd have a bit of support but um okay. ideally keep your knee up off the floor and you're using the other leg to stabilize yourself as you move forward great thank yeah. you so much yeah that was really really helpful and and what i mean when people are going back into to work um what a great sort of little at desk strategy to, yeah. to help you through the day <laughs> everyone's going to be lunging <laughs> yeah i think it's great and i think and especially now you know we've kind of lost that that wonderful ebb and flow of office life where you go up and chat with a colleague or go out and get coffee and what a great way to just go oh every hour i'll do my stretch routine I, yeah fantastic well, exactly. I mean, I think especially in lockdown. Um, oh, that's just a little bit of lightning there. I just saw. Um, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> if it suddenly starts crashing around, as uh, people will just have to try very hard to listen. Um, oh, there's the thunder. Can you hear that? I don't know. Oh, wow, I can hear it. Yeah. Can you hear it? Um, <laughs> so, I when I've been speaking to Andy, actually, so my partner, he works from home and um at the moment and he says he really misses that kind of the morning commute the, go the getting up and getting a coffee the the moving about and it is just so easy now i think when we're all working from home just to stay at your desk and not move for hours so i think it's really useful with these sort of 
stretches and massage techniques that we've shown that can be do, done seated uh, just to kind of add it, almost add it into your schedule. Set yourself a Absolutely. reminder to, to move um, because I think now more than ever, it's important to uh, remember to move because there's just not there's not the same excuses anymore to kind of get up, have a chat with someone. Um, go out for lunch, go for a coffee, go, exactly. go to a meeting room. Yeah, I couldn't exactly. agree more. And when I give my working from home talk, you know, sort of well-being whilst working from home, I encourage people to go on a, on a pretend commute yeah. um, because I think that really helps. You know, we kind of need our commute as much as we hate our commute, but we almost need it to, to wind up to our working day and working life and also wind down. And, yeah. and as long as you're, you know, wearing masks or doing it at a physically safe dif dis distance, I think that that really helps help your mindset gets in a bit of you know physical stretch the legs as it were and yeah. helps you get into work mode or out of work mode and I think just these sort of stretches will will only add to that benefit as well so thank you very very much I, I really love the idea of, of that. Uh, <laughs> pretend commute it's a great great idea yeah, I, I'm <laughs> you'd have your that. coffee to go avoid all eye contact with anyone you know <laughs> 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 let's hear it to you better Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it's high behind an standard <laughs> um, metro elbow people <laughs> so just just to finish off girl because i know we're kind of uh, starting to run out of time but um we've had a uh, question for kate so right uh andy has asked if he if he wants to um go ahead with coaching how many sessions for an individual would you normally recommend? Um, I think it, you look at what the individual wants to achieve and um, and it, the pace that they want to work at. Now, I would tend to say that, you know, having a session every two to three weeks is, is ideal and you might want between six and nine sessions. If you find that you're constantly coming back to coaching constantly coming back to coaching you might want to reassess what you're working on and potentially who you're working with so this is suppose another big difference between coaching and counseling somebody will probably be with their counselor for quite a long period of time whereas coaching is really the intervention to use when you're wanting to take action and and at the end of that coaching journey of say six seven sessions you've got your your toolkit as it were to go ahead and and carry on the good work and the good habits that you've created with your coach um now saying that i work with small businesses and they tend to you know have a year's worth of coaching for example or they'll bring me in for an intensive session and then six months later they'll bring me back again depending on on the concern but i think that's slightly different to, to an individual i hope that answers answers your question andy yeah no that does i hope that answers your question andy uh... <laughs> So, yes, I think it does. Thank Leave you us a much. comment. Uh, yeah. Or, well, I was going to say, um, it, as you can see, little uh, Kate's email address is, is flying across the bottom. Not that Kate's little, the, li the, the, the email address is little. Uh, it's, it's going down at the bottom, coach at kate-bishop.co.uk. So if you have any questions regarding uh, life coaching and, and where and how you, you get involved with that, Give her an email if you want to email us as well we can forward a question on to kate and what is left to say is just thank you so much for for being with us kate it's been absolutely oh. fantastic we really appreciate it your time and it's been really insightful just to find out a bit more about coaching and how it can help our general kind of well-being and mental health and and how it could be something a part of our lives so it's it's really, really been a good, useful chat. So thank you very much. And also thank you so thank much you. for um, uh, recommending the, the, the charity. Um, as we've said, a third of any of the donations, if anyone's donated, will go to Calm, which is a men's mental health charity. So thank you so much for everyone who's donated and listened to our first ever live stream. Uh, Claire, do you have anything else to say before we... Uh, and likewise thank you very much kate that was really really interesting and thank um you. uh thank you for being part of this um inaugural live stream um and we will be back in two weeks which will be the first of july <laughs> uh, 
where's the time going um, with our with our next live stream so um, please keep an eye out for that and if anyone isn't able to um, wasn't able to watch the whole thing live today um, it'll all be available to catch up on um, on Instagram Twitter Facebook and any other <laughs> of these internet places that people go to <laughs> very um, tech savvy <laughs> and and finally a last little thing if if people are struggling with any um problems pains we do have a working from home um 12 episodes called working from home and i guess the old thunder again it's really starting to go oh. crazy out there um renting dramatically <laughs> my, my girl is barking because it's, it's all good. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, it's been a while. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's a working from home series. It's on our YouTube. Um, it's all completely free. And we we go through basically all areas of the body. So if you've got a problem with your neck, shoulders, your arms, or anything like that, we they're just little tips that might help uh, in this situation when at the moment we can't unfortunately offer you uh, physical therapies at the moment. So yeah, hopefully that'll help. And thank you very much. And that's it. Thank, thank you. So much. Thank you so much. I feel so honored to have been part of this and and I just love what you do. I, I've used your videos over the last few weeks to to help. So thank you very, very much indeed. Oh. Adios, amigos. Cheerio. Bye. Stay safe. Take care. Yeah, everybody stay safe. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.